Okay, so I was working on building a large air cannon, but it ended up my parts that I was using wasn't going to work, and I have to rework the design a little bit. And by rework, I just mean I need new parts because one of the main pieces doesn't work because I used something slightly different because it's what I was able to get hold of. Anyway, it's on hold for a couple weeks until the part shows up. And uh, so, yeah. I was going to go with the next project, which you're now seeing before, which is a black powder one. Anyway, I got the idea for this. I can't even remember where, so I'm afraid I can't really give credit to it. I remember where it was someone I follow on Instagram, but it was probably over a month or two ago. So I don't actually remember how or who exactly it was. So if you're watching this, I know I comment on your thing, so you probably know who you are, and I'm sorry that I don't remember. But anyway, I got this piece of something scrap steel locks into something here got some bearings there don't know what it is i've had it sitting around since before i started blacksmithing i think but as you can see i've been using it for a while <laughs> my main plan is though i'm going to kind of make sure it tapers a little more on one side i'm going to drill a hole going through it don't know how far probably see what kind of drills i can get a hold of because the one i have isn't super long i'm going for like i think it's three eighths inch, which is just a little bigger than the si size I was kind of going for, which you kind of want anyway, except to have things slide down the barrel because you don't want things to get lodged. Otherwise things have a tendency to explode, but that'll make it about like a 357, uh, which same size 357 Magnum or the 38 specials, not really relevant, but it's the size I'm using and also the largest drill bit I have before getting to the ones that basically put large holes in like wood. I don't have any of those for metal and this is clearly metal. Anyway, so I'm gonna taper one side in the forge, cut it off, probably, or I might try tapering a little bit, we'll see how that goes. And, and then of course I'm gonna take it to the grinder, sand it round, or as round as I can, because I don't have a lathe, unfortunately. Can't afford one. So anyone who comments that you'd be easier if you had this, they're expensive and I don't have that kind of cash. I spend it all on ammo. Actually I didn't, but still, my job doesn't pay that much. Anyway, gonna cut it off. Forge it out, drill my hole, then make some sort of mount for it. I might, if I can, try and make it look like an actual like little cannon, but I might just mount it onto something and call it good. We'll see how I'm feeling when I actually get it forged. So yeah, I'm gonna go heat it up in the forge and uh, I'll probably keep it attached just so I have a nice handle to hold on to. It, it's kind of handy sometimes, especially if something's big, I don't have tongs that'll hold that. Should make some. I won't get to it for a while. So I'm gonna start, stop talking and start hammering.
drilled out. It only goes to probably about here, so I can kind of round this off a little more. And you know, it has a lot of stuff behind it, so it's not, you know, it's gonna blow out the back. Not that I'm really too worried. This isn't a, gonna be a very powerful cannon. This is a little mini one. And uh, I said it's about the size of about a 38. I also think going center south to center while grinding it. Hopefully I don't knock that over. This, if I can grab it through the camera, is a 38 special. I just had in a thing of uh, shells that I had. Don't know where it came from because I don't know anyone that actually has a 38 special. I know some people have a 3030, or not 3030s, I don't know if you have those too, but uh, 357s. I actually have one too with no shells for it because, you know, ammo at the moment. But I don't know anyone who actually has these or has actually shot these in a long time, so I don't know where this actually came from. But, oh wait, yeah I do. I scammed these off a bridge a while back. Fun fact, if you shoot these with a slingshot, they scream. This fits almost perfectly in. And it's a bit of a tight fit, but it's because the inside is not exactly clean. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my angle grinder, put a grinding wheel on instead of a cutting wheel, kind of grind this a little more. I'm not really too worried about looking perfectly nice, but I do want it to be a bit straighter if I can. There's a lot of steel here, so I'm not exactly worried about being perfect. And once I get that done, I need to drill a small hole wherever the back of this is so I can put the fuse in. I don't actually have any fuses, but I found some ways to make them using the black powder that I got and just some uh, wrapping tissue paper stuff. So of what you use for wrapping packages. So I'm gonna give that a shot. I think that should work. If not, I just drill a little bigger, put gunpowder in it, light it with a torch like they used to. I'm not gonna do that. I'll find another way to do it before I do that. So don't do that. Then once I do that, once I get it drilled out and all that, I'm gonna make a small stand for it to where I'm gonna just set up and probably you know, mount into like a tree stump or something so it's not just sitting there so it doesn't fly back when I put powder into it. So enough talk, more grinding. Okay, now that I have everything smoothed out, as you can see, the hole is off center. But considering, you know, I'm not joining the French army with this thing, I'm not really too worried. So, I do have it set to where the hole doesn't go in straight because, you know, I was holding it with my hand because I have a very small drill. Anyway, so I'm gonna have it, it basically sits where the smaller side will be facing down to where, you know, if this thing accidentally, you know, doesn't shoot like a can and just, you know, throw shrapnel everywhere, which seems unlikely considering how heavy this thing is, but still possible. It's gonna throw up more down as opposed to back at me. So that's fine. Now what I'm gonna do before I drill in the hole for the fuse to go in, I'm gonna chuck it in my forge uh, heat cycle a few times where it gets like a dark, uh, darker finish with a little more scale on it. I kind of liked the forge look of it before. I just wanted to be, you know, a little more uniform shape. So, Gonna do that, won't film it because it's literally nothing to watch. But then once I do that, I'm gonna drill the hole, probably put it in my vise, and just kinda test a blank through it. You know, just a little bit of powder, a little wadding. Nothing that's actually gonna get me in trouble because I live in town. Oh, who am I kidding? This is a small town in the Midwest, no one cares. Anyway, gonna go do that. So I'll get back to you when I'm drilling a hole for the fuse. Okay, so I just completed my first test. I will uh, 
probably put it just after I do this clip. Don't know yet, haven't decided. But basically, I just put in like a, it was a half a tablespoon or whatever of black powder because for some reason someone thought it was a good idea to let me buy that. And then I just filled up this little thing with, uh, I took the powder I had and just ground it up a little bit more. Be careful when doing that, make sure you're doing something that won't cause a spark, because that's what burns very quickly. But then poured it in there and just lit it with a torch. A lot of these I've seen use fuses, and that would definitely be the safe option. However, they're kind of hard to get a hold of unless you want to order them online and wait another several months. So I just drilled it out, drilled the hole a little bit more on the tip here. Not much, just a little bit to where it has a small pan there. And then I could just light it with basically, you know, whatever, torch or I'll probably make some sort of a, not really a fuse, but like wick at the end of a stick. So I can just, you know, stand back several feet and then light it from there. That's actually how they used to light cannons and even early firearms. That's what they would light is basically they'd have something to light the powder and then it'd go before they actually started having things to actually, to, you know, set them off by pulling a trigger. So yeah, my shop currently smells like gunpowder because you know, that's fun. I don't mind the smell really, but so I know it works. The test, I just put in some uh, bright pink tissue paper for just some wadding. I, um, I got bright pink because it's what Walmart had and they didn't really have any like good colors, like black or anything like that. So I'm like, you might as well go bright sparkly pink because you're building a cannon. And for my ammo, like it, the stuff I'm gonna use just barely fits, or it fits in here, but rolls a little bit. So I'll put a little bit of that around it before I put it down. You want your ammo to fit snug enough that it's not just gonna roll out on you, but you also have to wanna hammer it in because then your thing will blow up. Also with the way I do it, this will probably be what blows up instead of the rest of the cannon. So in theory, if this were to, you know, malfunction, it's gonna shoot up instead of out. In theory anyway. But now that I know the cannon works, I'm going to basically just weld up a small stand for it. I want to be able to, uh, basically I'm going to have a ring here that goes around it and then have a plate that comes under that and then comes over the back of it. So that way you know I can fire it back a little bit. Then have a large plate welded on the bottom with two holes drilled in it to where I can just screw it down onto a log. I figured that'd be my best option. I don't want to weld directly onto this mostly because usually if you do that, you can actually weaken that. This should be thick enough and considering gunpowder is actually relatively weak in comparison to what we use for modern firearms, I don't think that would be an issue, but I'm not running the risk. And besides, I think welding directly onto it kind of ruined the aesthetic of this design. So not that there's really much aesthetic to this. So I'm gonna go dig through my scrap metal, see what I can come up with, start cutting and welding, I guess. Okay, so after a couple test runs, I don't think I can hit much with this. Probably on account of I'm using these. Ball bearings are expensive, so I just cut out these little pieces, and since they're not round, they don't fly straight. Not that round flies straight. So basically, I'm just using muzzle loader propellant, ground up a little bit of this for the fuse. Got a slow match that I made last night. Seems to work decently well once I gotta figure out how to use it. Uh, I do have some beer cans I've been shooting at, but um, not catch the grass on fire. Uh, I can't seem to hit anything, so I have to just put them on the end and basically fire point blank, whatever I'm shooting at. So I got a couple other targets I wanna shoot first, just cause I wanna see what these things do before I actually, you know, soak it in beer. Because that's gonna not only smell bad, but it might make it wet, it might make it difficult to actually light off the powder, which I don't want, so. I'm gonna shoot those first, and then we'll see if I can blow up some of these beer cans. So I ended up lying. I uh, forgot to grab what I needed, so all I have are these three beer cans. So, 
Now yeah, let's hope it doesn't get too wet and see what happens. <laughs> ah, that was fun. So I've actually seen this from actually other low pressure shells, which this is. It's only like a, oh, what it, what it's a th basically a 357 caliber, which is the size of the bore, with a half a tablespoon of black powder, which is considerably less than your average 38. So not a lot of power. It didn't even knock out all the beer, which is a shame. This stuff tastes terrible. Anyway, so you can see clean throw, entry hole, and actually pressure blew it out. You can see the powder burns from being point blank. And that's our exit hole. So unfortunately, I only have a couple more of these to shoot because I forgot to grab what I needed. I might save them though, bring them out next weekend because this video doesn't have to go up for another several weeks. But since I'm here, might as well blow up the rest of these. Okay, so it's now a week after I've shot the last part of this, so if uh, it's exploding beer cans, it was shot a week before this. If it's not exploding beer cans, it's now. Because I actually got the stuff that I forgot to bring. So, different location. Ooh, nice. Anyway, so I'm going to, uh, I have another setup here because, you know, it needs to be close. I have a couple things that I'm hoping is gonna go through. But I don't know, so I got some fuses for that so I can light it and run away. So, you know, hoping for the best there. But uh, I'm going to put this on a tripod and see what I can do with this melon. I, I really want to see what kind of wound channel this creates. Now I'm a lot of power, not a good projectile, so I just want to see what happens. Okay, so <laughs> this is kind of surprising. Entry hole. Exit hole. So, yeah, that's not what I expected. I'm gonna go get a knife and cut this open and maybe see what I can see, but I don't think there's too much here. That was, that was okay, surprising. so this is what the wound channel looks like. This whole thing where it's all ripped open, that was as this projectile was going through. See a bit of pink that is from the wadding. I hear that was actually a major problem with early muskets, they would they would, you know, rip a hole in you and they'd have that in there. They, that infection would kill you. But it basically, I don't know if it'll really focus, but all the way through there and I'm assuming this back part looks about the same, but I think this thing actually didn't tumble as much as I thought it did, but maybe I had to be a little farther away. So I'm gonna try my other two targets and based on the power that showed, I actually have a little more faith that it's gonna work, hopefully. Okay, so I was hoping for better, but I'm not surprised that this is what happened. Basically, got a pretty good powder burn. It's, you know, cracked, and it's got a dent. I don't know how I, yeah, you can see it. It's dented in before the projectile hit it, but no, uh, I guess it pushed that out a bit. So it would hurt, but I don't know if it have the power to actually break that, which these are pretty solid, so I'm not surprised. I've seen slingshots do about the same damage, so I spelled the same part of a slingshot, but that is actually why I lit a fuse and was able to, you know, get some distance and why I didn't just light it, because if it goes through, the energy is stopped and is dissipated as it goes through. But in this situation, that didn't happen, and it bounced off, and that can be dangerous, and I didn't want to be anywhere close. So, as I have stated several times, don't make these, don't do this, this is just for entertainment. But I'm gonna go shout out this against the tree. One sec. 